Okay. Yay! Hi guys. So I am coming on. Thank goodness I made it out of work and it's Friday. Whew. Because yes, I am feeling all the energies today. So the lunar eclipse as of right now is still going on. It is not in totality anymore, but it is uh it is still um, you know growing again so you'll be able to see the light depending on where you are apparently by the time we see it it'll pretty much be we won't be able to tell that it's not full already which stinks but you know what are you gonna do um, but I I don't know about you guys this one is killing me though um, the energies today were all over the place my communication was all over the place and of course today I happen to be at the main office which means patient after patient after patient after patient. You pretty much stay in the room and there's a, a t an aide who brings patients to you pretty much and you do the patient and all their history and stuff. I'm telling you, there's a couple times today that whatever came out of my mouth and after you do uh, the same thing over and over so many times, I basically have a script in my head so I don't have to think about it very much. I know what I have to ask them. Today, that did not matter. Um, I'll give you an example. I literally said to someone, I, my line should have been, um, are there any moles or scars on your breasts that may show up during the images? And what I said was, are there any moles or breasts that will show up on the images? And she looked at me and I said, did I just say breasts? Did I say moles or breasts that are so, will show up? And she says, yep. And I said, well, in my defense, the lunar eclipse is happening right now as we speak. <laughs> I'm telling you. Woo! It was all over the place. So, uh, I did want to come on because on Wednesday, I got to go to Goodwill. Yay! Um, so, I did get, I got a couple books and I got a couple really neat things that I want to show you all. So, ah, I'm so glad to be home. I just feel like, a, ah, remember I said, take some extra time try to breathe in between. Today was just one of those days where I couldn't take extra time. It was literally one patient after another and after another. I don't even know how many I did. Probably 25, 30. <sighs> Crazy. Okay. So, let me start though. Because this was a really good haul. I really found some good stuff. Now, what I didn't find, I was kind of slightly annoyed. I couldn't go last week. Last week was just a little odd week for me. Um, so I, I bet you that's probably when my pink tags were um, were the tag that was 50% off because all the books that I was looking at that I said, oh good, maybe it'll be there. There it wasn't pink tag and all the, the books that I wanted there were gone. But I did find a couple anyways. I always find something, you know, up my alley. Uh, the first thing I found is um, I love these. Um, they're really, I don't know, they're for making cupcakes and stuff, I think but they are the pliable silicone um, and, and I can use them to make soap and these are little footballs and so football season for us, not soccer, but football for us, which I don't know, do you call American football from England? I would guess. Uh, football season for us is just starting. Our training camp just started this week. Uh, I paid 99 cents though. It was a green tag by the way, which means any green tags are 50% off. And not a lot of my stuff was 50% off, but I still found good deals. 99 cents, how can you go wrong? I'm gonna make soaps, football soaps. Yay, perfect. Okay, then I did find a couple books here. Uh, the first one is The Words of Extraordinary Woman. Woman, see? Mm-hmm. Of Extraordinary Women, selected and introduced by Carolyn Warner. Um, and Something about by Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. So this was a green tag. It was a $3 green tag, which means I paid a buck fifty. And what this is is a whole book of quotes uh, from important women. Which I love to use quotes. I make um, they're great when you're doing like a vision board. Um, and I don't know if I've ever talked about a vision board on here. Affirmation board. board. Um, you really need something when you wake up in the morning and you've had that kind of crappy day. You uh, write all over it stuff that really inspires you. So this is what this is. There's a whole bunch of um, quotes by extraordinary women. 
and they are broken up into categories. So at least you can go, okay, let's see, the arts, character, education, faith, family, humor, leadership, politics, self-image, success, and women. So let's flip to women, just to get an idea. Jane Addams, so of course was John Addams' wife, said, I do not believe that women are better than men. We have not wrecked railroads, nor corrupted legislatures, nor done many unholy things that men have done. But then we must remember that we have not had that chance. Pretty good, right? Some people regard discipline as a chore. For me, it's, it is a kind of order that sets me free. That was Julie Andrews. So I really, to me, this is great. Uh, I have, I keep a journal of quotes that I love. Um, and so anytime I can find a book like that, I can use that for my vision boards. All right, so that was about 50. I got a book called Conscious Dreaming, A Spiritual Path for Everyday Life by Robert Moss. Uh, this one is about like astral projection and shamanic journeying, that kind of thing. It says, um, con in Conscious Dreaming, Robert Moss details a unique nine-step approach to understanding dreams using contemporary dream work techniques developed from shamanic cultures around the world. Conscious Dreaming shows you how to use your dreams to understand your past shape your future, get in touch with your deepest desires, and be guided by your higher self. Moss explains how to apply shamanic dream work techniques, most notably from the Australian Aboriginal and Native American traditions, to the challenges of modern life and embark on dream journeys. Moss's methods are easy, effective, and entertaining, animated by his skillful retelling of his own dreams and those of his students, and the dreams often uh, dramatic insights and outcomes. According to Moss, some shamans believe that nothing occurs in ordinary reality unless it has been dreamed first. In the dreamscape, we not only glimpse future events, we can also develop our ability to choose more carefully between possible futures. Conscious Dreaming's innovative system of dream catching and transpersonal inter interpretation of dream re-entry and keeping a dream journal enables the reader to tap into the deepest sources of creativity and intuition and make better choices in the critical passages of life. That sounds like a really cool book. Um, so, very interesting. I already keep a dream journal. I've, I've talked about that before, how my husband says he's going to use that to uh, put me in the loony bin someday <laughs> because I dream really some whacked up dreams. As a matter of fact, alright, so I'm going to put this on camera just, just in case something weird ever happens. I had a dream last night right before I woke up that um, that I had a hole, like a, a hole probably this big, on the inside of my right thigh and that I kept pulling stuff out of the hole because I didn't want it to become infected. Like a hole, like it was like a bed sore. I don't know if you've ever seen a bed sore, I don't mean to get too gross, but like I pulled the sock out of it and I, I kept pulling stuff out of this hole and my old boss, Larry, who I haven't worked with for years and years, this was from Watkins Glen, um, kept saying to me, well, you have to go to work. And I'm like, I know, but I'm trying to get all the stuff out of this hole so that I know it won't get infected. And I kept pulling all this weird crap out of it. Okay, so now you know, my husband actually probably can have me in turn. Okay, <laughs> now, witchcraft, oh, how are we? Eight minutes, all right, I'm still okay. Witchcraft in Europe, uh, 1100 to 1700, a documentary history by Alan Kors, K-O-R-S, and Edward Peters. So this is a, a very specific history book about witchcraft in Europe, um, which to me, I, I love to study the history of it. Um, and it's specifically from the dates of 1100 to 1250. Um, just, you know, some really, really interesting uh, witchcraft in Christendom, St. Thomas Aquinas and the nature of evil, the papacy, the inquisition and the early witch finders, the hammer of witches, the witch persecutions of the 16th century, um, and then there's all kinds of images in here too. Can you see that? Um, so a, a book I'm really interested in taking a look at. I love, love, love 
uh, vintage history books about witchcraft. Um, the vintage books to me, the, the older the better. Um, I have some from the 70s. I think I have one from the 50s. This one uh, was originally written in 1972. This is uh, a 1992 copy, but still good. So in the last book, oh, by the way, I spent, none of these had green. So I spent two bucks on the Conscious Dreaming. I spent two bucks on the Witchcraft in Europe book. And I spent two bucks on Therapeutic Herb Manual, a guide to the safe and effective use of liquid herbal extracts. Uh, this is by Ed Smith. Um, really, really looks like uh, a good book. Uh, Ed Smith, popularly known as Herbal Ed, has been working as a medical herbalist for 30 years and is founder and o owner of Herb Farm, P-H-A-R-M, like pharmacy, an organic herb farm and herbal extract company located in Williams, Oregon. Ed is an internationally respected teacher and lecturer on herbs and herbal healthcare and appears at many herbal gatherings, symposiums, and expositions throughout the world. His work and teachings incorporate old world herbal folk wisdom with modern herbal science and also expresses his love for nature and her healing plants. In his constant search for herbal, herbal knowledge, Ed travels frequently throughout North America, Latin America, Europe, Africa, Asia, and the South Pacific seeking out medicinal herbs and information about their health promoting powers. It is this worldly perspective, his integration of old and new herbal knowledge and his vast experience that make Ed such a highly respected herbal resource. Um, so this book is um, organized uh, into uh, alphabetical. First it lists the uh, herb alphabetically. So let's say uh, blue cohosh. Okay. So on this page, it lists it all alphabetically. Blue cohosh. Then it says the, you know, Latin actual term for it. I'm not even going to try. Uh, liquid extract of dried rhizome with rootlets. Action. Antispasmatic and antihermetic uterine tonic. So for your uterus. Promotes effectual labor contractions. So that helps with labor. And averts premature labor and facilitates postpartum recovery. I see, I didn't know that. I knew about the postmenopausal stuff. Uses for a threatened miscarriage, menstrual cramps and discomfort, excessive flow, menopause pains and discomfort, weak and irritable nervous system and nervous insomnia. Dose, take 30 to 40 drops three to four times a day. So it gives you uh, how much to use, what you use it for, uh, and what the dose should be. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Let's look at lemon balm, because that's one of our herbs that we have out, hopefully for the next three weeks to get through mercury. Uh, we are using liquid extract of fresh leaf and flowering tops. Actions, pleasant and aroma, pleasant aroma and taste, stomach, stomach ache. Mild sedative and tranquilizer, antispasmodic. Promotes sweating, taken hot, so taken in tea, and lowers fevers. It's also an antiviral. Uh, uses for nervous irritation, headaches, nervous heart, nervous stomach, and indigestion with flatulence, farting, chills and fevers, menstrual blues and emotions, herpes <laughs> used internally and topically, and other viral diseases. Excellent remedy for babies and young children, colds, flus, and fevers, teething, nervousness, overexcitement, peevishness, and sleeplessness, and colic. Dose, take 30 to 40 drops two to five times a day. Take in hot water for fevers. Topically, apply full strength. How awesome is that? I, I mean, it's this is, I'm so psyched. Um, so it goes through all the herbs like that, then it, goes in alphabetical by the ailment. So let's say um, I am, here we go, female libido tonic. Sexual tonic for enhancing female libido. Um, and then it tells you uh, what to use. 
uh, Miura Puma Stem with Bark, 32%, Shatavari Root, Chinese Ginseng, Ginger, Cinnamon Bark. And it says the quantities, like the percentages. Um, uses, indicated for women who have a low sexual appetite or lack positive response to sexual stimulation. Vaginal dryness during sexual stimulation may be helpful as adjunct therapy in certain cases of female infertility as a general gynecological tonic to ally various menstrual disorders. Dose, 30, take 30 to 40 drops in water two to four times a day. To optimize results, take 30 to 40 drops of ginseng extract with each dose above. So uh, then it goes through, you know, all of the things, you know, if you had a cold, you'd look that up. Uh, then it goes through relaxing sleep tonic, uh, valerian, passion flower, hops, chamomile, flower, catnip leaf, and flowering tops, fresh and or dried. It, so it goes through all, everything. Trauma drops compound, turmeric, awesome. I'm really, this is going to be, on my herb shelf, this is going to be a good one. Um, so one of the things that, you know, usually when I go to Goodwill, I know, like, there's a couple things that I found that I'm like, oh, this is why I came today. One of them is this. I found a singing bowl. I don't want to show you how much, but look, it's got a lotus flower in, in the middle there. Absolutely gorgeous. Let me see. Now, it did not have uh, a striker to it. But it's got a great sound. And I already have one for another singing bowl I had. So they had this uh, in the dishware. They thought it was a bowl. And are you ready? I paid $2 for a new singing bowl. I love bargains. Yes! <laughs> um, so that was definitely, I'll show you, the last thing I'm saving for last was the other thing that, the other aha thing that I knew, that's why I went. Um, I found this brass spoon, which I paid $2 for. See on there, to me, that looks like Kali, maybe. I don't know for sure. I hope you can see the detail. Hold on. Can you see the detail on her? Yeah, there you go. And then here's the spoon side. And look at, even the back is really ornate. I paid $2 for that too. Um, and I just, I was like, hell yeah, I have to have that. Uh, I found this great old vintage box that I told my husband, oh, he's right here, that I was going to um, make an altar kit, and I might. It's hard for me to give up these great old vintage boxes, but I probably should. Uh, so I paid $3. I look at, see the silver to the box? I paid $3. Ready? And it would make a great altar box. Look, it's got a mirror, and it's got little compartments in there, and it's got a mirror on it. Isn't that the cutest thing? So that that's like a little vanity box that a Victorian woman woman would have had on her vanity. Um, produced, I have to look it up a little bit more, but it says on the back, designed and produced by Marl Lee Ng in Chicago, Inc. in Chicago, USA. So I'm hoping when I look that up a little bit, I can find out a little bit more about the company and how old it is. And so, loved that. I love that. Um, I found, look at these two little wooden hands that I'm sure are ring holders, but because the thumb is out in front, I can use them for card holders on my altar. And there's two of them. And I paid $2. And I haven't done anything to them. I'm going to put a little bit of um, wood oil on, mineral oil, and or wood oil, I haven't decided yet, something like that. And um, they're going to polish up great, and they stand up, their bottoms are flat, and I can put um, tarot cards on them to, you know, show my tarot cards. Love them. Two bucks. And then the last two things. 
before I get to the big thing. Um, first of all, I found little chime candles, little spell candles, which, you know, of course, people uh, used for Christmas, I'm sure. Um, a whole bunch of red and a whole bunch of green. And inside are eight plain white little chime holder candle holders, which I can break up and use in my altar kits. And I paid a buck for all of them. I did really well this time. One more. I found brass little candle holders, and I haven't counted them. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think there's eight in here, too. And they're brass, and they're for little chime candles, spell candles. And I paid $3 for eight brass ones that I can split up and put into my altar kits. Love it. So I did really, really super well. So the last thing I'm gonna show you is I was all done. I thought I was all done. I was on my way out and I always like go through the wood section one last time before I leave because sometimes the wood section is hard for me to see stuff because everything kind of blends in together. And um, I happened to glance up and saw these this picture. And I thought, what is that? And I still am not certain. So, but here we go, ready? Can you see this? Hold on. So this is, it's like poster size. And, I don't know if you can read any of this, but see the I Ching? This is a person, and I didn't realize until I got up to the um, cashier that there was two in here. And it's from a local or semi-local place. It's from uh, Huntington, New York. See that? And it has all kinds of information all the way through the chakras there. And if you look at the whole thing, this is the back of a person. And then the one that was behind it is the front of a person. And look at all the different I Ching things and all the information. I have yet to read all this information yet, guys. So I still am not exactly sure what I've got, but I'm like, this is the coolest thing. And it's obviously vintage. It's obviously old. And I paid three bucks a piece. Three bucks for the front and three, three bucks for the back. Isn't that super cool? I'm really excited that I found that. I was like, oh, this is what I came for. I... It's just, um, to me, that vintage, especially vintage um, metaphysical kind of stuff is so interesting to me. So I'll have to tell you once I kind of look this up and figure out exactly what it is and um, what it's talking about and where it came from, because it says the microcosmic orbit, small heavenly cycle, the governor channel, Yang, as taught by Master Man. Mantak Chia, Healing Tao Center of Taoist Esoteric Yoga. So how cool. So I'm going to um, look all that up and figure out what exactly it means. But I was really psyched. I did very well. I have quite a few videos. Now it is Mercury Retrograde, so we'll see how this all goes. This may take me, you know, three hours to upload my half hour video here. And we'll see. Um, I probably won't be doing any more tonight because I am whooped. It was quite the day. But I will be doing some tomorrow, definitely. And uh, we'll see how it goes tomorrow. Sunday I have, uh, we're going to Buffalo Bills training camp. Yay! Um, and uh, so I may do some before we leave. I have to see what time it is or when we get home. We'll see. I hope your weekend is starting great, that you're enjoying the energy of the lunar eclipse. Hopefully the energy cycle is on its way back up. It's still Mercury retrograde for three weeks, but hopefully the lunar eclipse part, boy, really knocked me for a loop today. So hopefully it's starting to get better. Blessings. I hope you have a great weekend.